This holds a special uh, place in my heart, if you will, simply because it was the first time I was introduced to the UC timeline of Gundam. Back in that time, Toonami had drowned us out with Gundam Wing, and then G Gundam, ugh. His hands of ours are burning red! Their loud cry tells us to grasp happiness! Yes, I know, some people like G-Gunner, but it wasn't my cup of tea. Sorry, I don't like super robots. Then they had War in the Pocket late at night, and it blew my mind. It was Gundam the way I wanted it to be. It was about people. It was about places. It was about feelings. It showed that there was no good or evil side, that war isn't as simple as black and white, that Zeon wasn't this all-out bad guy and... The Earth Federation wasn't exactly good guys either. It was just people. And that's what moved me the most. Seeing a young boy and his love for mobile suits lead him down an adventure that was heartbreaking, really. It encapsulated what life was. A struggle. Confusing. Growing up. And watching things and people you love die. Gundam 0080 War in the Pocket is a must-see if you're a Gundam fan. And the Alex Gundam is one of the all-time favorite mobile suits in the entire Gundam lore. And it didn't even have that much screen time. That's how badass the suit was. Honestly, to this day, it's still one of my favorite Gundam designs. So, buying the 2.0 of this kit was a no-brainer. I had no intentions of buying the 1.0 of the Alex because, let's face it, it is dated. It is a hot mess. Not saying that the 2.0 is the be-all end-all. It's a much better kit than the predecessor, but it still has its drawbacks. Well, I've pontificated for like three minutes and unfortunately I have pets annoying the hell out of me in the background. Starting off as a Chobam armor, this has been completely overhauled from the original from what I can tell. Though I don't know much about it because I thought it was an abomination. I must say that the overall design and aesthetic look is fantastic. The gimmicks are straightforward, a lot of opening hatches, and you know what? Not bad. I believe the reason why the Alex's inner frame is severely lacking is because Bandai was including the Chobam armor with an inner frame for said armor. That could probably explain why we have molded in pistons. I hate molded in pistons with a passion. I don't know why in the name of God they put molded in pistons on a Master Grade Gundam. It's disgusting. No. Jesus, what is this, a high grade? But, when you look at all the other stuff you get, I guess you can forgive. They had to save money somewhere. The engineering for the kid is actually impressive. I'll say that much. Though I feel the arm cannons don't function as well as I'd like. I feel it just falls apart too easily trying to pull out the machine guns in the arms, but I'm skipping ahead of myself. And also, if you paint your kits, you'll find that putting the Chobam armor together on top of the inner metal frame is a bit of a bitter pill to swallow. As we all know, most of these kits are designed to fit snugly and perfectly. You add in a few layers of paint, and all of a sudden, snug is uh, an understatement. More like stuck becomes a thing. And it gets extremely annoying trying to remove these bits. But... That's my own struggle, not the fault of the design. If properly painted, the Chobam armor really, really pops. It can truly come to life. At first, I didn't like it, but when I finished painting it, then I could look at it and appreciate it for what it was. The original color is this sort of bluish gray. It's very mute. It doesn't speak to me. It doesn't tickle my nuts with a feather. No, you got to paint this in my opinion. But hey, painting's not for everybody. Also, the other big gripe here. This kit comes with stickers. It would have been so much nicer if Bandai did me a solid and at least threw in dry transfers. I'd have been happy. No. Peel and sticks. And since the Alex 1.0 wasn't that popular due to, uh, mo uh, due to a myriad of reasons I'm not going to get into, 
There wasn't too many water slide decals I could get that were worth anything. The ones I could get my hands on suck. They were slightly better than the stickers that Bandai gave. And that is atrocious. When you literally have water slides that are only a smidgen better than the peel and stick and you're just left to either try and... Oh my god, it was horrendous. They're horrible. It just ruins the aesthetic look of the suit completely. There was nothing I could do. I felt like DSP. I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. Overall, the Chobam armor, I like it. I originally thought I was going to dislike it, but now it's grown on me after painting. When I work on my Infinite Dimensions version of the Alex kit, I'll probably put this Alex gun to back in the Chobam armor to have them versus one another. It'd be cool looking to have the contrast between the two suits. The inner frame. Mm, it's all right. I can't really say much about it. At least it's designed in mind to work with the shoulder gatlings. That's about all I can say about it. I'm not really blown away by it. The separation is non-existent. So if you want to color in gold and pistons and so on and so forth, get your brush out or you need to be a master masking tape artist. Overall, it's a nice touch. It's a little something extra. And as I stated before, the fact that they added all this may be the reason why a lot of the features in the suit itself were just molded together. Even the cockpit. Most master grades have a cockpit that is uh, separate from the rest of the frame. That's not the case with the Alex. Unfortunately, I didn't think to record the extra painting I did on the inner frame. I probably should have. Ain't nobody got time for that. It's bad enough I have to paint this and then spend my entire day filming it just to spend my night editing it. So adding an extra video to edit just to... No. Now I'd rather hit myself in the nuts with a small bat, which I happen to have. I should give it to the bagel boss. I can't really say much about the outer frame other than if you paint it a reflective metallic color, it looks cool. The standard color it comes in is a sort of uh, gray metalish looking plastic. It's real mute. It's not worth the effort of keeping in my opinion. The back thrusters are actually plated in some sort of silver color, as well as the forearm gatlings. The silver color, severely lacking. Also, it's not accurate to the anime. I forgot what the anime color was. I made the mistake of painting it a more dark steel color, which when it should have been a black or a granite gray or something. Once you remove or add on the armor, but in my case, I'm going from Chobam down, you are left with the Alex in all of its glory, as we know it from the anime in its entirety, as it spent most of its time outside of said Shobam armor. I'll have to reiterate again that there was a bit of corner cutting here. The cockpit only opens in a sort of latch style, whereas to most Master Grey Gundams also have the door opening. Oh, by the way, it also comes with a Bernie figure and Alphonse. And I'm going to say right now, I screwed up on Alphonse real bad. I was testing out a new flesh tone and it didn't level correctly on the figure. So it left his face all melted looking. And then when I was just like, you know, I don't have time to strip this down and do it again. I'm just going to try and work around it. I did my panel line wash on it completely horribly. And in doing so, I completely got rid of all of the painted in details I did for the shirt. It was stupid. Now this cover with brown. Bernie was a bit easier to work with considering Bernie's an adult size figure, so it's a little bit bigger. To give you an idea of how big they are, get yourself a few grains of rice and put it in your hand. And then try and paint a face on it. <laughs> the Alex Gundam itself is beautiful to behold. Unfortunately, I painted this kit, so I can't really remember what the original colors were. Oh wait, I can look at photos online. Doi. As I stated before, the color combination I feel for the Alex is one of the best in all of Gundam lore. It is truly beautiful to me for some reason. It's just that right sort of mixture and it just works for me. Oh, the back legs. You see how there's like they're dipping in? You better have yourself a toothpick because those go inside all the time. And if you're not careful, it can fall inside the leg and you'll have to take it apart to get the piece out. This didn't happen to me. I had enough foresight to see the issue. Anyway, back on point. The Alex Gundam is a beautiful kit. The thrusters come in a plated silver that I found ugly. I stripped that down immediately 
and repainted it myself with a darker steel and then I used a, a burnt sort of metallic color over it. I can't remember the color. It's slightly yellowish and it gives a sort of golden tint that worked really well with the Gaia Note Star Bright Gold. So I went with those two colors. Oh yeah, by the way, very little wiggle room there. So if you paint that gold, be ready to have some of it scrape when putting it together with the main thruster body. The side legs, nice, honestly, I like them. It's iconic, really. And it trickled down into later iterations of the Gundam. I mean, let's face it, the new Gundam kind of had it. And then the heavy weapon system kind of had it, except ramped up on steroids. Really like that design. I don't know why it didn't end up on more kits. Yes, it's a Xeon figure over there. The leg articulation, it's okay. That's the best I can say. It's okay. This kit is not really that poseable. I hate to break it to you. If you try to do too many things with the legs, the side skirts pop off every single time. It becomes tedious to the point of where you're just like, why bother even attempting to pose the legs like you're doing something? If you do anything outside of the stoic, heroic pose, you will have those two pieces pop off routinely. Showing off the forearm gatlings, which are one of the coolest bits ever put on a Gundam. Whoever came up with that back when they were doing War in the Pocket was on the money. Because still to this day, it's just so iconic with the Alex. That's probably what makes it stand out the most. Now, I forgot to say that there is a broken head tip that I totally forgot to use while wearing the Chobam armor on this suit to recreate the scene with Kemper. Forgive me. I had a puppy in the background going absolutely mad. She spilled her sanity on the floor and then decided to spread it all over the house. The other drawback of this kit is the inability to move the arms around too much. I find that every time I mess with them, they pop out of place, then I gotta move those little bags back and stick it back in. It's a real pain. Also, I forgot to state that the Chobam chest armor, <sighs> putting that on with the full fledgling armor, frame and everything, it's super tight when you paint your kits to the point of where it feels like it's scratching. But thankfully, the paint is durable enough that it didn't scratch off. Thank God, I would have been very upset about that. Once again, the stick-on decals are so horrendous, they're not worth using. So you'll notice that I don't have the decal on the center of the V-fin on the head because it looked horrible. And the water slide I had was too big by a hair. So it would have thrown off the aesthetic look completely. I also feel that the beam sabers on the back are oversized. It almost feels like those are the same size as the Zeta, the double Zeta Gundam or something. It's like the real big beam sabers. I don't recall them being that big on the Alex. Am I crazy? Do I have to watch it again to confirm that the beam sabers are a little oversized? The hands come out with the typical switching hands. And I didn't really elaborate on this enough, or I should say, I didn't film the interesting gimmick. When it comes to the blaster hands of the trigger fingers, they slide directly in place which is fantastic. It makes life so much easier when putting a weapon in the hand of the Gundam. So that's a pretty big boon. I hope to see it in future kits. Though I'm not really a fan of the switchable hands, they are much easier to deal with and they're not prone to break anywhere near as much as the articulated 2.0 and 3.0 hands that we've all come to know and some of us love, others hate. I don't know. I personally dig the articulation hands because then you can, I suppose, ability and whatnot. Oh, this kit is made out of styrene, by the way. So there's no ABS plastic pieces. That means you need to be careful with this. If you put it together and you make a mistake, taking it apart, you need to be careful or you can and you will break this. I have been reading that people break their wrist joints all the time on this kit. You know, be forewarned, styrene is not that tough. Styrene is a good choice when it comes to like sanding down, you know, nub marks and cleaning up imperfections but when it comes to durability it is just horrible that's why when most people build and make stormtrooper suits they only use styrene for really detailed suits that are going to be on display and abs for people who like to wear the suits and run around and get hit with sticks and whatnot by kids who think they're jedis i've worked with plastic for a lot of my life in resins anyway 
the bazooka is actually my favorite part of this entire kit. I think this bazooka looks cool as hell. Maybe it's because it reminds me of a Zaku bazooka with a slight design change. Oh, I forgot to mention you also get a free blaster. Mm, you paid for it, so it's not really free. From the Gundam 2.0. Totally forgot to show that in the video, but I really didn't care. It was like... When you see that blaster a billion times, the mystique of it wears off real quick. Could be great for a kit bash. And no, I didn't paint it. I was too lazy. I primered it and said, why would I waste my time painting this? I don't have time. I have to say that this kit is truly well designed. I didn't even talk about the fact that the front skirts slide open to allow you to connect the Chobam armor. Or that there's a sliding feature in the backpack that allows you to connect the Chobam armor. There's just a lot here that's really well thought out. And that's probably why there's a lot of molded in details of the frame. I know I have to reiterate that again. I genuinely like this kit. Maybe it's because I just like the Alex Gundam. And I'm glad that Bandai decided to do a 2.0. I know people have been waiting something like 10 years for this. It's not as amazing as I'd hoped it would be. But overall, it's a good enough product. It's good enough that I could recommend it to people who want one. Good enough I could recommend it to Alex Gundam fans because the only other option you have for the Alex Gundam is either the 1.0 or buying an Infinite Dimensions Alex Gundam Resin Conversion Kit for the Gundam Origins Master Grade, which does look absolutely mind-bendingly amazing. But the level of time, effort, work you'd have to put into making it happen is just too much for the average Gunpla builder, and that's for sure. Oh, I forgot to talk about the shield, by the way. Let's face it, the beam saber, the beam rifle, the shield, none of it is actually cannon. Well, it could be. The shield could possibly be cannon, but everything else, no. No, wait, I have seen that rifle before in some art and illustrations. Listen, it's not really cannon. It wasn't in the show. All right, let's quit splitting hairs. None of these things were in the show. We only ever saw the shoulder gatlings and the beam saber. But the fact that Bandai added this and gave it a fully articulated shield that opens up to show the beam gatling is a nice touch i mean really it's very flashy it's very in your face and i'm glad they took the time to add something like that it may not be canon but you can live with a retcon if it kicks some ass you know what i'm saying i mean it's not like bethesda's retcons where they completely disavow the story they came up with <laughs> well let's not even get into the video gaming stuff the only gripe I guess I could have for the shield in itself is uh, not enough part separation. To really get the best out of that shield, you'd have to mask it off and do some painting. And I was masking it to paint the inside. Then I realized how much time I already wasted on this kit and I moved on. I have made a lot of mistakes with this one. And ironically, this is the what 11th kit I've done. And it has been officially one year since I started painting Gumpla. So this is what one year of Gumpla looks like. Not my best work to to go out on, you know what I'm saying? Really should have put more effort into that. Oh, the shield. Oh, God. I hated trying to do the panel lines inside of those little vents. It sucked ass. I could not get a good look on that. So maybe I'll have to weather it at some point. Oh, this kit was given to me by Cody, I believe. 